Hello friends, you are welcome to Word Encounter and today we are beginning a new series and it is titled It's Time to be Serious. It's Time to be Serious. You know, it's a four-part series and we're going to talk about, you know, the times we're living in and um, we're going to look at the prophetic time and we're going to talk about what kind of behavior, what kind of lifestyle, what kind of living should match the times we're living in. Many people are asleep. The church is asleep. The church is kind of not really, really awake to the seriousness of the times we're living in. It's time to be serious. That's the uh, theme of what we're talking about. But today, which is part one, our title is Knowing the Time. Knowing the Time. It's very, very important. Very important that we know the importance of knowing the time all right let us listen to the musical ministration of the foster triplets and we will be back we will be back to begin to know how important it is to to know what time we are in time is very essential and that's why we are doing this may god bless you as you listen in Jesus' name, Amen. On 
Thank you, Four Star Triplets, for that beautiful, uh, beautiful music. We're going to pray now, and then we begin. Our title, once again, today is Knowing the Time. I, I could have titled it The Importance of Knowing the Time. So we're going to talk about the importance, okay, of knowing the time. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, the times in which we live. All right. Let us bow as we pray. Father, we give you glory. We worship you. We praise you today. And we pray that you will bless us. Real God, thank you for giving us the privilege to, to pray to you, to worship you, to know these things. And help us to be serious about knowing what you want us to know. Let your spirit alone uh, be the one to teach us. Let your spirit empower this message into our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. Knowing the time is very important. When you look into the side mirror of any car, I'm not sure it's all the cars, but most modern cars, you will see right in there, they scribbled some instructions there. What you read there is object in the mirror is closer than it appears. And I want to say it's the same thing with the second coming of Jesus Christ. As we look into the prophetic time, as we look into the time, the times that we are living in, we will begin to see that it is closer than we think. I actually believe that we are living on borrowed time. Um, this is extra time if it's football. So God is, is calling upon us to understand, to know the importance of time. Uh, because a lot of things are, are going on and we need to wake up to these things. Ellen White will tell us, cancers for the church. Page 37, paragraph 2, she said, The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world. And the final movement will be rapid ones. The final movement will be rapid ones. The, the implication of that last uh, clause or, or so, it, it's, it's that there will be no time to prepare once the final events have started. So we need to know the times in which we are living right now so that you and I can adequately prepare for what is to burst upon the world. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. This is no time to be asleep. This is the time to be serious. This is no time to be kidding, to be joking. No, this is time to be serious in your life. We are told in the Bible, Paul was telling us, about the importance of time. And, and here's what Paul has to say. Romans chapter 13, we will read from verse uh, 11 to 14. Paul says, it says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. What is Paul saying in verse 11 here of Romans chapter 13? Paul is saying that the, when we know the time, that's only when we become serious. We become awake to the reality of the times and the things that are coming upon the earth and the need for preparation. Paul goes on 
in verse 12 and he wrote, he says, The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. So when we understand the times, these are the things that will be taking place in our lives. We will realize that the night of this world, of this sinful era, is far spent and, and it is almost day. You know, and we need to be serious in casting off of the works of darkness and putting on the armor of light. That's the importance. If you don't know the time, you won't know what to do. You know, Moses went into Egypt and told the children of Israel that it is time to leave. It is time to leave. You know, we're going to be looking at the Bible and seeing the importance of timing. It's very important. Let us continue with Paul. In verse 13 of chapter 13 of the book of Romans, he continues and he says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Those who don't know the time, those who are not awake to the reality of the times we live in, those who have not studied the, the Holy Scriptures to know the importance of, of knowing the time, they will continue. They, they may be church members. They may, be even, they may even be church leaders. But they don't know the time and they are asleep. But God does not want us to be caught off guard. God has put in the Scriptures... He has revealed things that tell us the times we are living in. So, it's not time for uh, rioting and uh, a drunkenness and chambering and wantonness and strife and envy. And Paul says in verse 14 of that chapter, he says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. To fulfill the lots thereof. So some people think that um, we will continue to fulfill the loss of the flesh. The, 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 we will continue to sin, in other words, before Jesus comes. But Paul says, no, it's time to put off the works of the flesh. Now, when Jesus came to earth, when he began his ministry... He started with these words, Mark chapter 1 verse 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Wow. So Jesus came proclaiming the fulfillment of time. Or should I say time prophecy? Because Jesus understood the prophecies of Daniel. Daniel had predicted the exact time the Messiah will appear. And Jesus was talking about that very time when he says the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of grace is introduced. The kingdom is here. That's the meaning of the kingdom of is a time. The kingdom is divided into two, the kingdom of grace and the kingdom of glory. If you will ever be part of the kingdom of glory, you need to be part of the kingdom of grace. So Jesus said that the kingdom is at hand because the time is fulfilled. And what people needed to do because of the time in which they are living, they needed to repent and believe the gospel. If they do not know what the time of their visitation is, they might be careless and be lost. That's very, very, very sad. Jesus was entering into, the, into Jerusalem. You know what 
we call the triumphal entry of Jerusalem. Jesus was sitting on a colt and the people were waving the palms and throwing their clothes on the ground. He was actually fulfilling a prophecy at that time. He was fulfilling a prophecy and when he came close to the city, the Son of God was in tears. Jesus was weeping. He was crying over the city. And there is a reason. And as Jesus looks at the church today, and he sees the carelessness, the ignorance, the willing, you know, ignorance. People are willingly ignorant. The reason is because all the materials, all everything they need to know to prepare for his coming, to know the times in which they are living in, everything is available, is there. But they don't make any effort to know. It was, all of these things were also there for the Jews. And so Jesus came close to the city, Luke chapter 19, verse 41. The Bible tells us this, it says, And when he was come, Near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Is Jesus weeping over the church today? Is Jesus weeping over your soul today? It's very important that we know, that we know exactly what's happening. Why was he weeping? Why was he weeping over the, the city of Jerusalem, the beloved city of God? Why was he weeping? He, he told us why he was weeping. From verse 42 we read, saying, if thou hast known, even thou, at, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. The reason why Jesus was weeping was because they did not know the time. And they didn't know the things that belong to their peace. Is this kind of thing happening to the church today? As I preach around the churches, I remember many years ago I was preaching in Benin City, you know, church, and that church had 12 elders at a time in the, in the very heart of Benin. And I asked the question, what is the mark of the beast? And the chorus came back, 666. It was a Seventh-day Adventist church. And I was taken aback the people of God. And guess what? Every time I asked about what is the image of the beast to an audience, the people of God don't know these things. There are, I mean, I even can't remember when one person got it really right. It saddens my heart that, that these things are already happening. The image of the beast is being formed. But the people of God don't know the times. And these things are tied to their destiny, to their eternal destiny. We're going to talk about all that in this series. And you need to follow. So, Jesus said, Jesus was weeping because they have not known the time. He said, if you have known, at least in this thy day, do you know the time in this your day? Uh, do, do you know the things that, that belong to your peace? So that's what Jesus is talking about here. And he was weeping over the city. I believe he's weeping over the church today. Let's continue to read the words of Jesus in Luke 19. He continues and he says, for the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round about, and keep thee on every side. Verse 44, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. So why was cal calamity going to overtake them, the, the children of Israel? Why was calamity going to overtake the Jews? The reason calamity was going to overtake them, Jesus said, was because 
they did not know the time of their visitation. You see, they were living just a few decades from the destruction of Jerusalem. All right, the Romans were going to come. Jesus here was predicting the destruction of Jerusalem. And he said, I would have shielded you. I would shield you from this disaster. But I long to gather you as a hen would gather her chicks. But you would not. Because you do not know the times. You have not studied the prophecies. And you have not applied your heart to what God is saying today. So it is very important, as you can see. And uh, Jesus was talking to the religious leaders of the times because the religious leaders ought to be telling the people the times they were living in. It ought to be in their sermons and their prayers and, and their teachings. But, but, but they were not doing that. And Jesus actually re reproved them. Matthew 16, verse 1, look at what Jesus said. The Pharisees also, with the Sadducees, they came to him and tempting him, they were tempting him, that he would show them a sign from heaven. Verse 2, he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather, Today, for the sky is red and lowering. All ye hypocrites, ye can descend the face of the sky, but can ye not descend the signs of the times? So, the signs that were happening, the signs of the times, the destruction of Jerusalem was predicted in the book of Daniel. It was called the abomination of desolation, standing in the holy place, when they see that sign, they would know that the destruction of the, of the city was nigh and they should run out of the city. No Christian died in the destruction of Jerusalem because they studied the times. And then when the Roman soldiers retreated, they all fled. And when they came back besieged the city, there was no longer any believing Christian in the city. Only the blind Jews who were rejoicing that God had defeated their enemies when the Romans retreated at first for no reason, no apparent reason. But the Christians could read the signs that this was the prophecy. This was, and they knew that they were living in a time in which they needed to do something. So they followed the instruction of Jesus Christ and they ran out of the city. And that's the importance of knowing the time. It's an issue of life and death. So if you're not studying the mark of the beast, the, uh, uh, the, the, the forming of the image of the beast, you're not giving your heart to preparation so that you can be part of those who are called the saints who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus, living the life of Christ. If you do not know the seriousness of the times in which we are living. That's a fundamental problem spiritually. So, the signs are giving us to, to awaken us, to let us know that something important, something connected with our destiny, something connected with our, our, our salvation is about to happen. This is very, very important, my friend. Very important that we know the times. God wants us to understand these things ourselves. And he, he wants us. You see, when we are not awakened to the times, guess what we will be doing as, you know, people in the church, even as leaders. We will be going after things that are not relevant instead of preparing our souls. Many people will be saying the church is cold. It's time to roll in you know, the music of the world you know, and all of that. <laughs> Those are the things you hear in church today. They're not you know, talking about the real thing that revives the soul. 
Let us read or continue from Matthew chapter 16. This time we are reading from verse 4 and it says, It is Jesus speaking. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. He left them and departed. You know, so it's very important that we do not uh, major in minors. <laughs> we, do not, we do not seek things. You know, talking about signs, the Bible says that those that believe the signs we follow them, we are not to go seeking the signs. When we believe the word of God in our heart and begin to practice and go out to share the word under the power of the Holy Spirit, the signs will follow us. Powerful stuff, the signs will follow us. We are not to go seeking for signs. We are to prepare our hearts, consecrate our lives, study the word of God, be willing to share it, and the power of God will come to our lives. You know, when we do not know the times we're living in, when we do not know the times we as leaders of the church cannot even be given the right message to the church, you know, it's not all kinds of messages that are relevant at all times, okay? There is something called present truth. And the servants of God ought to be feeding the flock of God with present truth. But if you do not know the time, you will not be feeding the flock of God with present truth. Jesus was talking about this in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 44, we read, and then we read to 48. Jesus said these words. He says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour, this is a time element, in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh, in such an hour as ye think not. And then he goes on to say, verse 45, Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Who is a faithful and wise servant? Who his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. So do you see the element of time there, even for spiritual leaders, for worship leaders, for preachers, for pastors? They themselves ought to know the times. They ought to be those who understand the times and understand the food that God's people ought to be feeding. Uh, are fed with. Okay? I want to read this from Ellen Writings, Ellen White, Ellen Writings, page 63 from paragraph 1. There is something called present truth. You can be preaching precious truth. Precious truth is not what the flock needs now. What is precious truth? Precious truth is just any kind of truth that is not the main thing you should be talking about now. You know, it could be good, it could be true, it could not be, it may not be false, but if it is not present truth, you are not feeding the flock. You are not giving the household of God meat in due season. You see, this is very important. Whether you are a deacon or an elder or a pastor, you need to understand the times. If not, the flock under I mean, your care are in danger, the flock. Your work is more important than that of a medical doctor. Your work is more important than, it, it, it deals with the eternal reality, the eternal life of people. And so you should know and understand the times. It's very important. So let us read what Ellen White talks about, <laughs> what we are saying. She, she says, there are many precious truths contained in the Word of God. But it is present truth that the flock needs now. There are many precious truths found in the Word of God. But it is present truth that the flock, the flock uh, uh, needs now. Let us continue to read. I have seen the danger of the messenger running off from the important points of present truth. 
That's a serious thing. Is it happening today? Is it happening in our time? Are there preachers? <laughs> Let me tell you this. I, I, I have a friend, uh, Gabriel Agbonjo, to be precise. Uh, he loves the Word of God. And my friend, uh, John, you know, Gabriel was uh, somewhere. They were doing uh, outreach. And uh, he was not a speaker. He was to be the anchor man. Uh, someone who does the introduction and all of that. He was overseeing some of the things. And then the, he was telling the speaker, when he saw the lineup of the subject, he saw that uh, there seemed to be more of motivational messages. And he, he, he was saying, why don't you include the sanctuary message, the change of the Sabbath, the mark of the beast, and then the preacher, who is a pastor, an ordained pastor now, said, I don't preach such things, you know? I don't even believe them. Can you imagine that? And he has gone on to be ordained in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and all of that. And there are many preachers out there who are not preaching the truth. This is a very serious matter. Souls are at stake in the churches that such pastors are pastoring. Let, let us continue with Ellen White's words. I have seen the danger of the messenger running off from the important points of present truth to dwell upon subjects that are not calculated to unite the flock and sanctify the soul. Satan will here take every possible advantage to injure the cause. What is Satan doing to injure the cause of the present truth? the cause of the three angels message or messages our our mandate our message and our mission satan doesn't like it and he's using pastors and preachers who don't believe in the present truth you know to injure the cause i know of many pastors and i have many um, I, who don't believe, I know of many who don't believe the present truth. The three angels' messages as believed and interpreted by the church. So it's time to be serious. Quite time to be serious. Let, let's continue with Ellen White. And she goes on to tell us what the message, the real message uh, really is. That, we, that, that the preachers should be focusing on in, in our churches. And, and as we proclaim the three angels' messages before the world. She continues, she says, But the subject of the sanctuary, in connection with the 2,300 days, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, these subjects are perfectly calculated to explain the past Advent movement and show what our present position is. Establish the faith of the doubting and give certainty to the glorious future. These I have frequently seen were the principal subjects of, on which the messengers should dwell. Do you hear this um, preaching, uh, these messages in your church? Why don't you go to your pastor and ask why? Why don't you talk to your elders? Why don't you show them uh, these quotes from the spirit of prophecy? Why don't you share this video with them uh, and let them know that we are living in serious times, but the flocks are not being fed. Uh, the, the flock of God is being shortchanged. Uh, uh, the flocks, the people of God are being shortchanged spiritually and not, not being fed in due season because maybe the shepherd does not know the time sleeping ministers are preaching to the sleeping audience that's what ellen white says that's how she calls it that's how she puts it somewhere so let us continue to read you know matthew 24 jesus continued and he said blessed is that servant whom his lord when he cometh shall find doing so that is feeding the flock accurately because that servant that pastor that elder understood the time you know so there's a blessing pronounced on those 
who understand the times. And he said, Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over his goods. What a blessing to those who are studying. What a blessing. Jesus continues, But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. You know, why does he say so? Because he has lost touch with the time in which he's living. Now, we're supposed to know when the Lord's coming is near. Exactly we are. Jesus said that when we begin to see the signs, you know, the, the great earthquake, which we are going to talk about in this series, the falling stars, uh, the, the, the dark day, and the other signs in the medical world, in the political world, and, and all around us in the, in the heavens and on the earth. When we begin to see the signs, Jesus said, we should know that, this, that his coming is near. We should know that our redemption draweth nigh. But this evil servant who does not, who cannot, you know, this, when he says evil servant, he's talking about a leader who is put in charge of people in the church. And sometimes these leaders don't emerge by being elected. They manipulate their ways to leadership and they call the evil servants. And sometimes when the, uh, the Lord moves on his children to give what is called the straight message and, and rebuke such kind of uh, lackadaisical situation and worldliness in the church and in such leaders, they start oppressing. Instead of feeding the flock, instead of the three angels' message, being preached, instead of promoting, instead of feeding the, the flock with, with, with good uh, food, they start oppressing their fellow servants. Let me read it to you. I, I'm not making up what I'm saying. Jesus said it. Let, let's read it. We read verses 48 and 49 now. Matthew 24. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day in which he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. You see the time element in, in what we are reading. Verse 51, and shall call him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why is it that, uh, you know, this evil servant in the church, who is supposed to be feeding the flock in due season with the present truth, is now oppressing his fellow servants. Each time we lose touch with the times we are living in, we will sink low into worldliness, tyranny. And that's what we see in the church today. It's sad. But, but that is, it, it, it is as a result of not being in touch with the times. This is a very serious stuff. We're talking about we all need to wake up and, and, and to the seriousness of the times we're living in and pray and commit our souls to Christ. So we see from this text, from what Jesus is saying, that each time we lose touch with the times we are living in, we sink into worldliness, we sink into hypocrisy, we sink into tyranny, even in the church. And um, let me give you another example. When people lost touch of the times, when they say, no, and they, they don't, when they say, Jesus is not coming, the evil servant, my Lord delayed is coming. I'm not, we're not sure Jesus is coming anymore. Then worldliness, laws begin to come in. I read it to you from 2 Peter. We read 2 Peter verses 3 and 4. 2 Peter verses 3 and 4. Let us read. Knowing this first, Peter wrote, that they shall come in the last days, scoffers walking after their own laws. Now, notice there is a time element there, the last days. And there will be scoffers. Verse 4, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? 
For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant. If you study the Bible, you will know that the Bible is the book of God. The prophecies in the Bible, you know, they will show you that it's no ordinary book. That a divine uh, being must have inspired it. Somebody who knew the future accurately. But this group of scoffers, they, they came to accept you know, the imaginations of their minds that Jesus isn't going to come. And what happened in their lives? They descended into, you know, giving in to their lusts. And that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to say that each time you don't understand the times we are living in and, and what should follow, what you should do to make sure that uh, your, 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 your life matches, you know, the times you're living in, um, you're going to descend into worldliness. Let me read something because we can't be careless at this time. We can't be, we can't be willingly ignorant. It's a sin. If we are, we, there are two types of ignorance. You know, there is this innocent kind of ignorance in which, you know, the person doesn't really know. And the person has no chance to know. But when the person has a chance to know and chooses not to know, that kind of ignorance is not forgiven. That's the kind of ignorance God speaks about in Hosea when he says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Not because there is no knowledge. If you read the context, the next verse or so, you know, says that they rejected knowledge. They rejected knowledge. So, not being willing to know the truth is to be willingly ignorant. And when you are willingly ignorant, it is a sin. God doesn't overlook that. That's not the kind of ignorance that Paul wrote about when he says, at the times of ignorance, God overlooks. Okay, so let, us, let me read to you Patriarchs and Prophets, uh, page 55. Ellen White says this. In the judgment, men will not be condemned because they conscientiously believed a lie, but because they did not believe the truth, because they neglected the opportunity of learning what truth is. Did you get that? They neglected the opportunity. The time they needed to study, to know the truth, they neglected it. And they were ignorant, but they were willingly ignorant, and so they are guilty. Let us continue to read. We must set our hearts to know what is truth. All the lessons which God has caused to be placed on record in his word are for our warning and instruction. They are given to save us from deception. Their neglect will result in ruin to ourselves. Their neglect will result in ruin to ourselves. So there is the importance of knowing. Each time we uh, lose touch with the times we're living in and we lose patience with what God is doing, then we are in danger. You know, in danger, in real danger. It happens to the Jews. It happened to the scoffers. It happened to the evil servants we talked about in Matthew chapter 24. And it can happen to you. It can happen to me. So it's time to be serious. It's time. It's time, okay, to be serious. Let me read to you from Exodus. You remember when the children of Israel came to Sinai and God called Moses up to take the Ten Commandments. And um, because they could not uh, endure any more and they were not dealing with the time they were living in appropriately they descended into idolatry into uh, worldliness and all kinds of things and they were not prepared 
for God. When Moses came down, he saw them, you know, dancing around the golden calf, you know, and he was angry. You know, when you lose time, uh, lose touch with the times you're living in. The Ten Commandments was being given upon the mount, but they lost touch. I mean, they didn't know the times. They were living in a very serious time, you know, in which God was speaking to them and when they needed to meditate on what he was saying. But let me read it to you. Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. It says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed, that's the important word that relates to time there. They were not dealing with time very well. When the people saw that, that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us gods, we shall go before us. And as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not is become of him. We don't know what has become of him. They said Moses brought them out. Well, it was God that actually brought them out. They forgot all of that. And so what is Jesus' counsel in all of this? What does he tell us to do today? Mark chapter 14 verse 38, Jesus said, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit is truly ready, but the flesh is weak. So Jesus said, watch and pray. It's time to watch and pray. We are going to look into the prophetic clock in, in the second uh, part. That second part is titled, What Time Is It? You know, we've been talking about the importance of time, but in part two, don't miss it. Next week, Saturday, we're going to post that. Okay, every Saturday, what time is it? You need to know what time is it. We need to pray now that God will help us to know the time, know the importance of knowing the time, and waking up to study His words. Our Father in heaven, we give you glory. We worship you. We praise you. There is none holy as you. There is none beside you. Bless us today and help us and take all the glory and honor. Thank you for hearing us and blessing us. Lord, we just give you glory. We praise you. We worship you. Help us today and take all the glory. Help us to know the time. Help us to be part of those who understand the time. Take all the glory, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, friends. God bless you as you continue to be with us. And then may you be a blessing to your family and to your church as you share these things. In Jesus' name. Amen.